Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be factoring a quartic polynomial. You might be questioning, what is so special about factoring a quartic? Well, there is something very special about this quartic, which you'll see in a little bit. And I'll be presenting two methods. And the first method, even though it's longer, I find it very interesting. All right, great. So let's go ahead and see how we can factor this. I hope you noticed that this is called a biquadratic, which means we don't have x cubed and we don't have x. So we can use substitution, set x squared equals y, and then this becomes quadratic. Easy, right? Okay, let's see what follows. When I replace x squared with y, x to the fourth is just going to be y squared, because if you square both sides, that's what you get. So we obtain y squared minus 11y plus 1. Now, is this equation factorable? How can you tell? Well, here's one of the things you can do. Are there two numbers whose product is 1 and whose sum is negative 11? They're not integers because the only factors of 1 are 1 and negative 1, but their sum will never be in no combination will there be a negative 11. So we can factor this trinomial as integer or four integer solutions, but did I say solutions? We can first solve this equation and then using it to find factors. So let's go ahead and set this equation equal to zero and then solve it using the quadratic formula, which is pretty straightforward, I hope. Negative b plus minus the square root of b squared, which is 1 to 81, minus 4ac, which is minus 4, divided by 2. So this is going to give us 11 plus minus the square root of 117 divided by 2. 117 is divisible by 9 because 1 plus 1 plus 7 is 9. Notice that. And it is actually 9 times 13. Great. So that means uh, if you square root it, you're going to get 3 times root 13 from there. So y is 11 plus minus 3 multiplied by root 13 divided by 2. Such an irrational number, right? So do you think it's factorable into integer factors? No. But this is going to give us an idea. And that's what I find really interesting. So we found two solutions, right? And what is y, though? y is x squared. So let's get back and back substitute. So let's go ahead and replace y with x squared. x squared equals 11 plus minus 3 root 13 over 2. I don't need two values. Let's go ahead and do one at a time. Let's go ahead and handle this. Uh oh, didn't want that. So let's go ahead and deal with the plus first. Now, if x squared is equal to this, you're probably going to square root both sides. But let's do it in a smart way. First of all, multiply the top and the bottom by 2, because I want to get a perfect square at the bottom, which is 4. Nice. And then, when I have an expression like a plus b plus 2 root ab, I hope you notice that this is square root of a plus square root of b squared. So I want to get a 2 in front of my radical, but I have a 6. So what can I do? Break it down into 2 times 3, and then throw the 3 inside as a 9. So this is going to become 22 plus 2 times the square root of 13 times 9. That comes from the 3. That's outside. And that's going to become 117 again. Oh, did we go back? No, this is different. Well, kind of. Oh, here's the thing, by the way. You don't have to go through this. You could just do it right here, which is probably going to be easier. I don't know why I did this, but anyways, I did. So now, if you square root it, uh, this is going to become 13 plus 9. This is going to be 13 times 9. And it's going to fit this pattern. Therefore, x squared is going to be 13, square root of 13 plus square root of 9, squared divided by 4. Make sense? Let's go ahead and square root both sides. But remember, there are two numbers whose square equals this irrational number. And those numbers are, by the way, this is a 3. 3 plus root 13 over 2, and negative 3 minus root 13 over 2. In other words, uh, these roots are opposites, because when you take the square root, you use absolute value, so on and so forth. So these roots are opposites, they're not conjugates. But guess what? There's another pair of solutions, which comes from the minus sign. x squared can also be 11 minus 3 root 13 over 2. We don't have to go through the same process. This is basically going to give you pretty much the same thing like 3 minus root 13. So the only thing that changes is the sign. But of course, the other solution is going to be the opposite of this, which is negative 3 plus root 13 over 2. So we got four solutions. Let's go ahead and 
name them x sub 1, x sub 2, x sub 3, and then x sub 4. I mean, a cortex should have four solutions. There's nothing surprising about it, right? Especially when it's by quadratic, solving is very easy. But let's see how we can go from this to the factors. Remember, our goal is to factor the cortic. But these are all irrational. How is that going to help me factor? Let's find out. So now I want to put x sub 1 and x sub 3 together. And you might be asking, like, why? Because it's fun. Of course, not just because it's fun. Because they are conjugates. Look at that. Awesome. Of course, the, uh, it's true for the opposites too. But let's just deal with these two because the others are similar. Now take a look at this. x1, x sub 1, and x sub 3 are conjugates. So let's write them together as this, right? We can just use the plus minus sign. That's because they're conjugates. And then from here, I want to do a little bit of algebraic manipulation. Don't manipulate people, but manipulate expressions. That's my motto or motto. Anyways, uh, multiply by 2 and then square both sides. This is going to be fun, right? No. You're not going to square both sides. First of all, isolate the radical and then square both sides. Because it's more fun. And guess what? When you square plus minus, the plus minus is going to disappear. So you're going to get 4x squared minus 12x plus 9 equals 13. Plus minus doesn't matter here. Subtract 13, you're going to get 4x squared minus 12x minus 4 equals 0. And then divide everything by 4. You're going to get x squared minus 3x minus 1 equals 0. If you did the other pair, you would basically be getting x squared plus 3x minus 1 equals 0. And when you put these two together, guess what? You're going to get your quartic. And isn't that awesome? I really like this method. And this is actually a method that I wouldn't say I invented, but it's probably well known. But guess what? I just thought about this problem. Can I solve this problem in two ways such that the first method is going to be a little painful? And here we go. So this is the first method. And let's go ahead and take a look at the second method. Of course, the second method is nicer and more elegant, but hey, what? First method is also hopefully helpful. Anyways, this is a special cortic. Remember I told you at the very beginning, right? And why is it special? Because this can be written as difference of two squares. How do I know that? First of all, when you have a biquadratic, you should always check this. I don't know if you've done a problem like this before, but here is the prompt. X to the fourth is a perfect square. One is a perfect square. I can probably turn this into perfect square. What is a good middle term? Because of the X to the fourth and one, I'm supposed to have plus minus 2 squared, right, in the middle. But when I, if I use 2x squared, then I have to subtract 13, which is not a perfect square. But if I use a minus 2x squared, then to get negative 11, I need to subtract 9x squared, and bingo, that's a perfect square. Awesome. So that's what I need to do. And guess what? This is a difference of two squares. Welcome to dots. What is dots? Difference of two squares. Let's go ahead and write it x squared minus 1 squared minus the quantity 3x squared. And guess what? You're done. Let's go ahead and write this as x squared plus 3x minus 1 and x squared minus 3x plus 1 because the sign changes here. And then this is equal to the original cortic, which is the factoring. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment. Like and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe. Take care and bye-bye.